Hi, I'm Brittany and welcome to my channel. In this video today, we'll be setting up a watercolor palette together. The very first thing I like to do is take a magic eraser and scrub my palette really well with it. This will help prevent your paints and the water from beating up on your plastic palette. Once you've scrubbed it really well, just rinse it and dry it. Okay, so once your palette is all scrubbed and dry, you're ready to put your paint colors in. So I've gone ahead and chosen my favorite colors, and this is a lot of colors. You do not need this many colors to start off with, obviously. But I've collected these colors over the years, and I wanted one palette where I could have all my favorite colors all together. So there are 28 wells along the sides here. And so I'm going to go ahead and fill those up with 28 of my favorite colors. And I am just arranging my colors going through the rainbow, basically. I'm going to do my reds, my oranges, yellows, greens, blues, purples, and then my browns and my black over here at the end. So we'll go ahead and get started. And I'm starting with the color Windsor Red Deep, which is my absolute favorite red. And you're just going to squeeze a big bunch in here. Feels about that that much. It's such a pretty red. It's a true kind of Christmas candy red. I haven't found a better one than that. This is Alizarin Crimson, and this is Daniel Smith. Um, all the colors I'm using are professional watercolors. I think it really helps use professional watercolors, and it makes a big difference in your painting. So. And that was Alizarin Crimson by Daniel Smith. This color is Permanent Rose. And this is the brand American Dream. It's a gorgeous pinky red. I love this color. I've decided to choose Quinacridone Magenta in place of Opera Rose. Opera Rose is a pretty pink, but it's super bright. It's like a Barbie pink. Which is not my style. So I'm going to use this quinacridone magenta. Kind of running out, but I'll get as much out as I can of this. So I'll use that for my pink color. Next color is Scarlet Lake. It's a beautiful orangey red. And orange is definitely my least favorite color. But I love, I do love the Scarlet Lake and I love to mix it with other colors. So I did decide to add a cadmium orange and this is just a Grumbacher. Um, this is kind of a less expensive watercolor brand. But like I said, orange is not my favorite color, but I do want to include this orange just to have. And I love to mix orange with pink and, and create a really pretty coral shade. This next color it's called Indian Red, and it is one of my favorite colors. I use this a lot. I love it. Let's see if I can get it open. Sometimes your colors get stuck if they dry on there. There we go. Ooh, it's coming out already. Okay, again, that's Indian Red. I think another color... Uh, another name for it is the English Red. Love that color. Then this is a yellow ochre. Again, this brand is Grumbacher. Love yellow ochre. This is a great color. The next yellow I have is called Ariolan, and this is American Dream. And then this is Cad Yellow Medium. This is Lemon Yellow Deep. The plain lemon yellow is just a little bit too bright for me. I like the deep shade. 
date of this. This is John Brilliant number one by Holbein, the brand Holbein. And I love this color so much. It's a really, it's a light creamy color. I love to mix it with reds and oranges and create some pretty pinks and corals. It's a great color. Okay, we're going to go into the greens now. My number one favorite green is sap green. The one I use the very most. I'm going to get a lot of this here. The next color I'm going to use is Hooker's Green Deep. This is just a very beautiful, like a Kelly Green color. And that is the brand Van Gogh. That's the first time I've used that brand. I couldn't find that in a different brand. This is Cascade Green by Daniel Smith. It's a really pretty green and has um, shades of blue in it. So sometimes it separates and shows the blue color, which is really pretty. Okay, and then my second favorite green here is the Paraline Green. This is a really dark green and it's just gorgeous. Ooh, it's coming out fast. This is my last green color. It's a super light green shade called Terra Verde, I think is how you say it. So let's go over here. We're going into our blues, and this is called Periwinkle by American Journey. Let's put that in here. Next is Cerulean Blue Hue. It's also an American Journey type um, brand. Then I have Cobalt Blue. I love cobalt blue. And this is from Winter Newton. I think that's where this stuff is from. Here's my pliers to open that up. And all the color this way too. That's a favorite blue, for sure. This is ultramarine blue, Grumbacher brand. And now I'm going to use Prussian Blue by American Journey. This is a favorite blue of mine for sure. Then my last blue that I'm going to put on here is Payne's Gray. I consider it a blue. It's called Payne's Gray. And this Holbein color is my favorite one. Sometimes Payne's Gray can look more blue or more gray. This one looks a little more blue, and I love this one so much. And then I'm going to put my purples right here, and I have two that I'm going to use. Um, Janet's Violet Rose by American Journey. It's a color from Janet Rogers, who's one of my favorite artists. She has such beautiful work. And then I have Mineral Violet. This is Holbein. It's a very pretty purple. Purple is not my favorite color, but I really like this one here. I'm going to use Transparent Red Oxide. This is Daniel Smith. It's like a burnt sienna type color. It's really pretty. And then this is Burnt Umber, Grimbacher brand. I 
can see that's the brown I use the most for its umber. And I am going to include a black on this palette. This is Ivory Black by Daniel Smith. Okay, and there you have it. Our palette is full of all of my favorite colors. I'm going to go ahead now and create a swatch of each of these colors so I can remember what colors are on this palette. All right, so I would normally let these paints dry overnight and harden all the way, but I'm going to go ahead and swatch them right now. I've just created this little chart that has the 12 wells on each side and then the four wells down here. And I'll just swatch each one of these and label them so I can remember what paints are on this palette. Okay, this is my Windsor Red B. Next is Permanent Alizarin Crimson. This is Permanent Rose. Next up is Quinacridone Magenta. Then we'll head into our oranges. This is Scarlet Lake. Cadmium Orange. Now I put this Indian Red right here. I didn't quite know where to put this color. It's such a pretty color. Next is yellow ochre. That's such a pretty yellow. Now we're going into Ariolan. It's a bright, bright yellow color. Now this is my cadmium yellow medium. And this is the lemon yellow bee. Okay, and this is my Jean Brilliant. I like to use this instead of white to lighten my colors. All right, moving on to the greens. We have Sap Green, my very favorite green here. Is what do I have here? Hooker's Green B. Okay, this is the Cascade Green. The artist that recommended this is Jean Haynes, who I love. She loves this color. It's so pretty. As it dries and kind of separates, it shows the blue. Oh, I love that. And then this is Paraline Green. I love that green. Okay, moving on. This is the Terra Vert color. Really light green.
Okay, I'm moving into the blues. This is Periwinkle. This is a fun color. Next we have the Cerulean Blue Q. Okay, next this is Cobalt. This next blue is Ultramarine Blue. Okay, next we have Prussian Blue. Except what my least favorite colors were, which are orange and probably like a bluish purple. But my favorite colors are the blue shades, the red and pink shades, and the green shades. I just love them. Now moving on to Payne's Gray. Now this is a must have for me. Okay, this next one is Janet's Violet, which probably belongs over here, but that's all right. And this is Mineral Violet. Okay, then moving into my browns, and this is my transparent oxide red, or transparent red oxide. Next one is burnt umber. And then last but not least, we have black. This is ivory black. So there we have our little swatch chart of our palette. And these colors are definitely my top favorites. I love them so much. I can't wait to start painting with this palette. All right, I'm just going to go ahead and label these colors now. Some of these are still drying, but I think I'll be okay to write over here. I'm just going to write straight on my colors. Okay, and there you have it. We have a palette that's all ready to go. And we have our little chart with all the colors, so we don't forget. I can put this in here. Hopefully I made it the right size. It looks like I did. If I ever close this and take it with me to go anywhere. Um, this palette it looks really great. I think I'm going to love it. The only thing that I'm not so sure about is that this closes on top of this. And if your paints are wet, that's going to be a problem. So. I probably won't take it as a traveling palette, but just use it at home. So I love all these colors and I'm excited to have all my favorites in one place and contained in one palette here. And I will link to all these colors below. You definitely don't need all these colors. If I was going to choose my top 
favorite colors. This is what I would choose. One's a red, deep is a must. I would probably have two reds. Scarlet Lake I would count as a red. And then I would have two yellows. I for sure have a bright yellow I love. I love an orange one. And I wouldn't be able to live without this, so I would choose the, the Jean Brilliant. So if I had to choose two blues, I would take an ultramarine blue or a cobalt blue. And the Payne's Gray, I would count as a blue. My top favorite greens for sure would be my sap green and my pearling green. So if I had to choose, these would be my top eight colors. And that's a good starting point for a beginning watercolor artist. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you found it helpful. And I can't wait to get painting.